From halfway around the world come two adventurers who will stop at nothing to see for themselves what's left of Borneo's once glorious tattoo traditions. Forging their way into country that was home to perhaps the fiercest headhunters the world has ever known, these two Canadians are hot on the trail of some of Sarawak's last remaining tribal tattoo masters. A small hand tap tattoo of only a few square inches takes many painful hours to pound into the flesh with a needle on a stick. But it's been decades since anyone along the Skrong River has seen this rite performed. These tattoo hunters won't quit until they've witnessed this vanishing ritual firsthand. Even sacrificing themselves to the needles, if they have to, to keep this dying art form alive. So, now what? Well, there should be someone we can ask. I'm Vince Hemmingson, writer and now historian of tattoo lore. My partner with the full body tattoo is renowned tattoo artist Thomas Lockhart. Tom's been tattooing for a quarter of a century, while I'm relatively new to the tattoo world. And what better place to start than Borneo? Right now, we're looking to charter a boat to start our journey. You're from where? Hi, we're from Canada. Canada, yes. Yeah. So, thank you very much. So, it's nice to meet you. Do you know if these are the boats? Take yeah, us to yeah, the South China Sea. Can we hire these yes, boats? Yes, inside the Tennessee. You get oh, this is boat. those are the boats for the yeah, South yeah, China yeah. Sea. For me, it all began the day I walked into West Coast Tattoo in Vancouver, Canada. As Tom inked my first tattoo, he regaled me with tales of his far-flung adventures in search of ancient tattoo practices. But it was Borneo with its history of headhunters, their bodies covered with suits of elaborate tattoos that really captured Tom's imagination. It wasn't long before I wanted to pack up and head for Borneo myself. And here we are today, heading out on what promises to be an incredible journey. Tom says we should make for the headwaters of the Skrong River, a boat journey of some 400 kilometers from our starting point, here in Kuching, the capital of the Malaysian state of Sarawak. Borneo is the largest landmass between Australia and Asia, and it's about as far from home as two Canadians can get. At just a single degree north of the equator, Vince and Thomas couldn't have picked a much hotter place either. Early explorers to Borneo told fabulous tales of incredible sights, none more frightening than the fabled wild man of Borneo. But the arrival of Europeans in the 19th and 20th centuries began to take the wild out of the warrior and the magic out of the indigenous culture. Some of that magic was tied up in tribal tattoos, marks so sacred that without them, the people would become invisible to their gods. Just like those early explorers, Vince and Thomas head eastwards from Kuching along the edge of the South China Sea. We thought we'd probably lose our bearings at some point on our three-week journey, but not this soon. Heavy smoke from forest fires on the Indonesian side of Borneo have completely obliterated the horizon. Placing our trust in the captain, we join him in the only thing we've forgotten to do, pray for a safe passage. We're not sure what gods we're invoking or whose protection we're seeking, but since we'll be heading up a river, once known as the River of Death, we figure we'll need all the help we can get. This part of the journey ends 50 kilometers up the Skrong at Pais. Here, they've arranged a rendezvous with two brothers, whom Thomas has often met at tattoo conventions around the world, Eddie and Simon David. Hey! Simon, Eddie, how are you well, guys doing? Well, 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 the famous David yeah, brothers. Can you guys know why? Eddie and Simon are the new generation of Iban. Iban are Borneo's largest ethnic group. I got some new tattoos I see. Eddie, you must be Vince. Yeah, it's nice to meet you. I love your tattoos. Thanks. They grew up not in the jungles, but among the high rises of the Malaysian capital, Kuala Lumpur, where they became tattooists in their own right. Eddie and Simon jumped at this opportunity to join the expedition because it's headed for the long house of their grandfather's brother, an old man they haven't seen since they were children the legendary Aki Busai. It's time for Eddie and Simon to reconnect with their past. Mm. 
They push onwards up the river of death in traditional Iban longboats, nowadays propelled by outboard motors. My brother and I, uh, we used to dislike going to the longhouses when we were kids because we didn't want to miss our favorite TV programs and um, our friends and going to the malls. And uh, when we were kids, we viewed uh, going to the longhouses as being uncool. Your friends would always make fun of you when you were uh, you're from the longhouse and you're primitive and stuff like that. Especially about the tattoos. They viewed the tattoos as being primitive, as a mark of a savage. This is about as far as crocs come up the scrum, so we can breathe more easily and enjoy other jungle fauna, like the proboscis monkey. The scrong looks idyllic, but don't let it fool you. Navigating through rapids and whirlpools is dangerous enough, but even more deadly snags and boulders lurk beneath the surface, keeping our boatmen on their toes. We've only been on the river for two hours, and already we're presented with a feast of tattoos. The hand-tapped designs on the back of our boatman, Lagan, are bold and skillfully done. It's got me thinking what I wouldn't give for a hand-tap tattoo of my own. Got some interesting tattoos here. Don't mind if I take a couple pictures, do you? You had that done upriver, I presume, did you? Tom appreciates the time and skill that goes into body art like this, and he wants a record of it. That man goes nowhere without his camera. Great shot. Excellent. All the way up his leg, right up his thigh, too. That's incredible. Excellent. I really appreciate this. Now, I noticed that you have a cowboy on your arm. What's the significance of a cowboy? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like cowboys? Yeah. He's got, a, he's got the... Uh... <laughs> Cowgirl. <laughs> <laughs> and what does this tattoo represent? Uh, this is a kalapa. This is a Thai Kala scorpion. Kalapa. Yeah. A scorpion. Kalapa. Kalapa. Yeah. In Iban. In Iban. Yeah. And... It goes all over your leg? Yes. Yeah. There are three. Um, one, two, and three. And what do they mean? He doesn't really know the meanings of the tattoos, but back in the day, when uh, uh, women, the women would, uh, were not going to go for a man without a tattoo. Ah, so tattoos are very attractive to women. Yes. <laughs> From scorpions to cowgirls. Our boatmen's tattoos tell the story of a tribal people inching away from their traditional ways. Eddie told me that 62-year-old Lagan received his tattoos while on Bujalai. This was an age-old Iban custom I would hear a lot about. Eddie described Bujalai as a young man's rite of passage, a journey downriver with his companions, out into the world in search of adventure, wealth, and knowledge. And not so long ago, human heads. This is Tom's third journey into Sarawak. Each time he's come looking for skulls and any sign of the old tattoo practices. The last time he was here, few of the old tattooists were still alive. He only hopes it's not too late for Vince to witness a hand tap tattoo session for himself. After a day pushing up river, the expedition arrives at La Long, the halfway point up the Strong. The longhouse at La Long is home to five extended families, including relatives of Eddie and Simon. The Iban measure their homes by the number of family units, or doors. This one is 28 doors long, an entire community of 120 people living under one roof. In the old days, the bigger the longhouse, the better. More people meant better protection against...